All right, it is just a little bit late spring. Stripers are kind of coming in earlier, it seems, this year. So we are on the water here in Maine. Uh, we got Aaron with us, Bear Proof Outdoors. So we're not doing guided striper trips yet. We're still working on getting that license. But what we are doing is getting our time on the water to get that license. So if you are interested, you want to learn some tips and you want to get out with us, just message Bear Proof Outdoors and we can talk about how to get you out on the water and how to get you catching some saltwater fish. So we're hoping to get on striper, black bass, mackerel, um, hunter, and uh, catch a whole slew of stuff out here today. Oh, and even uh, some haddock possibly. It's gonna be a fun day fishing. I can feel it, I can feel it. Mm. I can taste the fish in the water. It's gonna be a good day. Oh wow, that tastes so good. This is my baby! We got lunch. I'm Zachary Fowler and you're watching Fowler's Makery of Mischief. There we go, she is running. All right, she's running, that's cool. I don't know uh, how good the batteries are doing because I haven't charged them in Florida. And I'm a little concerned, mackerel are supposed to be in something that's rounded, otherwise they just go back and forth and bang into the walls and beat each other up. So if this makes a big mess of the mackerel, we'll have to fix that up. Hopefully uh, we can keep a couple alive and catch ourselves a striper. All right. A little bit of a sprinkle, but that doesn't hurt us. Just like the mailman, rain, sleet, or snow. We must catch fish. That's right. The fish are already wet. They don't care about rain. Do you think to crabs, it looks like fish can fly? <laughs> well, crabs can fly too. You ever see them do that little helicopter thing where they, they swim off the bottom? No, I have. They well, got, I know that I've had stuff off the bottom and they've gotten to it. They've, they've got these two little propellers in the back. They're like a little helicopter. Huh. It's, it's such a cool thing to see. Give these guys a try. They look really cute. I thought, let's give that a go. Oh, put my sinker on first. Looking good. Let's catch fish. Oh Lord, won't you give me a fish for dinner? My friends all have had it. I'd take a pollock. <laughs> Just to start with, I think I had one. Yep, we got a little one. Woo! First mackerel of the day. It's a nice, oh, that's a good bait size right there. Oh, there's a big ball of them right there. Yeah, buddy, I've got a bunch. Oh, right. These are perfect bait size. Oh, nice. Oh, I still got another one on, although it's sitting there. Nice. Oops. There we go. We got a quick cooler full. That uh, battery's ran out, so. We're just gonna rig them up and just start chucking them right here at the uh, ledges. We'll have a striper in no time. Yeehaw! And the sun is coming out. It's a beautiful day, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Zach, bring me right in. Bring you in? All right. I'm gonna rig one up with my slip bobber. Who wants to go fishing? You look like you wanna go fishing. Oh, oh. to get over here I couldn't find my rain pants before I left I really wish I had them now 
bit salty out. But I taste fish, we didn't have any luck so far. Let's see if uh, we get better luck over here. Some nice cliffs along the ocean. Beautiful homes, huh? Wouldn't that be a great living right there? We could just striper fish out your back door. Oh, wouldn't that be the dream? So that ledge right there, that's where I was standing when I caught that keeper the other day. Let's catch them. I wonder if those are kind of, there's like a whole bunch of... Uh, Bottom fish? Yeah, yeah, a couple here and there, but yeah. yeah. I, I would bet anything it's kind I met a guy that fishes this all the time. He lives right nearby. Mm. He told me he's a pescatarian. He only eats what he catches in the sea. What? A pescatarian? Yeah. Huh. yeah. Doesn't eat anything from the lamp, you know? It's like a little closet toilet. You hear eerie music? Oh, if uh, zombies ever show up and they see this seal get bit right in half. And they were wall to wall pogies from this point right here. A little bit smaller, and he's still following, so. But we. Oh, 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 fish line. Fish line. Got him? Yes, yes! Woo! Fish on, hun! <laughs> if I land him, it's the first striper of the season! Is it a keeper, though? Oh, man, wouldn't that be the sickest thing if the first fish of the season is a keeper? Please stay on, don't lose him. Oh man, he's good looking size too. Yeah, oh he's a good looking fish. He's got some serious bite to him. He does not want to come in. There we go. Come on. Yes! Yeah, buddy. Yes! Woo! <laughs> All right! Oh man, that's, a keeper. that's gotta be a keeper. First fish of the year is a keeper. Oh. So we got the tail to the edge of the boat. 29. 29. Right on the jaw. Hang on. Right? Yep, right 29 there. and a 29 and a quarter. Yeah, yeah. buddy. <laughs> That's how we do. That's how we do it. You still there? I got to, I got one. I got a keeper. Yeah. First first striper of the year is a keeper. Alright. Alright, I love you. I gotta go. I cannot believe it. First fish of the year, and it's a keeper. This is like, thank you, Lord. What happens when you have bear-proof outdoors? Yeah. Show you where the fish are. Yeah, it shows me a secret spot. <sighs> he really choked it, too. Oh, he choked it hard. Oh, there we go. I'm on it. Uh, I just can't get these things to, to work good. I'm drooling all over myself. I'm so excited. There we go. That was a hard one to get on. You got a knife? Yep. Cut the gills, cut the tail, bleed him. Yeah. And we'll put him on ice. So, you're saying? Cut him right there. I think we need a sharper knife. Uh, that's the wrong, that's my uh, just beater knife. Here. Oh, yeah, I got my knife. Got my good one here I brought with me. I got it. Yeah, there yeah. we go. All right, gills. And then what I do is I just cut, like right here where the fillet comes off the end, I just cut right in here and I just go straight into the bone. What? Yep, at an angle so that way you get underneath the, the scales. Yeah. <laughs> what that does is it's supposed to help uh, bleed the fish from front to back. There's no way to hold him. No. There we go. I'm gonna him a little shark comes up <laughs> right and this is where Aiden mm. just like ah oh, that is so exciting blood in the water blood on my hands fish for dinner yes all right my batteries were dead but fortunately I brought one of my other Dakotas with me it's who knows how much power is in it Let's see if my deck wash works hey look at that it's not much pressure but it does work <laughs> not much pressure at all 
Maybe there's a different setting. Oh, <laughs> look at that. That uh, doesn't work so well. That worked pretty good, actually. Look at that, Aaron, huh? Yeah, dude. I mean, it's not the most water pressure in the world, but we got most of the, the blood off of the immediate things. And uh, I'm gonna get back out there and get back in it. Oh, still, there we go. Yeehaw. I'm happy with that. Turn my shut thing back off. That's enough of that. Let's bag it. I bought this before Florida. I was being optimistic about catching something big and we never did have to use it. Jeez, it almost wasn't big enough. <laughs> Just the right size, wasn't it? Look yep. at that. Perfect. That is perfect. That's a perfect size for a keeper, huh? Yep. How cool is that? Well, let's get another line in the water and see if we can catch a... I'm going to try and catch a different species now. And maybe another one. I want to catch some of those cunner and maybe a black bass. So the Native Americans, they used to paddle their canoes from the gut over there in South Bristol. And they'd paddle straight across over here. And every week they'd set the fort on fire. And there's... There's a, a local legend of a pirate, and I can't remember his name. He had a bunch of his stuff stolen, so he decided that he was gonna make ends meet by coming here to New Harbor and setting this place on fire. Him and three ships rolled into here. They went past the breakwater, and they attacked the fort, and they sacked the little town, and they made off with about 1,500 bucks. And they said that he had buried his treasure on Damaris Cove Island down there, but accounts all say that he used that money to get himself back because he owed the money to the people that that outfitted him with his ship and everything so he basically <laughs> sacked this little town and went straight back to england paid off his debts and then just continued his life as a regular person Almost everything in our garden so far. We still have a couple beds we could put some more late stuff in that we didn't plant. Sarah's done most of the work for the garden this year, but look how beautiful it is. They're not ready yet. Look at the Swiss chard and the kale. We're just gonna have so much this year. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Nice, neat rows, unlike what I did last year. She does such a better job to the garden. But so far we got carrots, lettuce. Um, I'm not sure what happened here if we lost some of it. We got some random basils in there. We got some onions, rows and rows of onions in here, and um, some different peas, and our herbs are all moved to here because they were kind of spread out. And we got peppers, tomatoes across the back. It's looking really good. So we'll grab, we're gonna do the bass in sage brown butter. So we wanna grab some of this beautiful sage here. Some thyme for some tater thing of some sort. Maybe we'll keep it simple for the kids and uh, do the sage brown butter for the fish, thyme and tater tots on the griddle top and some chicken. That way everybody's happy. Oh, we're spider hunting right now. Wanna help me break them up? We got the new solo stove. They sent us a whole bunch. You can see that video linked down and below for Fowler Extra Channel where we unbox this. We got two of them they sent us plus the griddles and stuff. So I thought, hey, let's get this first one out here and uh, cook up our striper on it at the land. It's so beautiful. Look at that flame. 
thing just gets right up to heat so fast. Corn. I don't know if it's hot enough right here, but I think it's hot enough to give these corns a start. All right, we got our striper. And I did blast this guy with the pressure washer. <laughs> Every last scale, completely scaled. And it took off all the scales. I wish I had done both sides, but we were still shooting the thumbnail for it. So now I'm gonna have to do the other side by hand. That was so quick. It was just like, cleaned it right off. Perfectly clean. So this side, spotless, scaleless. Took them right off. And uh, Wow. I didn't know they could be scaled like that. Yeah, now we're gonna see if we can scale that one. Reason being, I wanted to keep the skin on the fillets so that it would help hold the moisture in. So let's see if we can get the scales off of this side. Uh, maybe I'll do it over there. It's actually not that hard on a fish like this, although the pressure washer was much, much easier. That's how you scale a fish? Yeah, so you drag the knife across it backwards, not cutting into it, but it makes the scales pop off. Learn well, something new every day. Yes, you do. You pay attention. All right, well, that actually goes a lot easier than smaller fish because they're big scales. Seriously huge chunk of fish. I was hoping with this big chunk of big hunk of fish that uh, when I checked its stomach, I would have found something cool. But when I got it, there was uh, nothing really in there. He was very hungry, so maybe that's why he bit. There we go. Not too shabby. Getting the blood lines out and all that stuff might make, like it does with some fish, it makes a huge difference. Like if you, just a regular bass from a lake or a pond, any puddle, you leave the, the skin on, ugh, gross, no good. Um, these guys are salt water though, so it should taste pretty darn good. But the skin on some fish more than others will impart more of a fishy flavor. And removing them can make all the world difference. We'll leave this one on and we'll take the other one off and fillet that one. And this one will fillet. I wonder if there's cheeks in here that are big enough to go after. Looks like there is. A little piece of cheek meat. Not incredibly huge, but could be good. All right, there's our cleaned up fish. I could pick away at this some more and make a stew out of it. Feed quite a few people, but we like to turn all our fish scraps into lobsters. Throwing them in the lobster trap, that's what we'll do. And this one we will fillet out fully and remove the thicker of the bloodlines. Let's see what we can get out of this. That's quite the hunk of meat. All right, now we got the majority of the bloodline off of that one and it's all clean. We'll see if that makes a difference. And we got our little pieces of cheek meat. And from when I got it last night, I also have a little bit of eggs and the heart. I think we're ready to dice up some vegetables and start cooking. We'll put this in the woods. Put that in the woods for the raccoons. That might've been a bad idea. I don't know if I want raccoons down here. <laughs> Gonna keep the cook nice and simple. Wanna finish in time that everybody is still hungry and not mad at me. What? And not for me, but just for Sarah. Not on the cooked one, mind you, but for Sarah, after some lemon. And then we just got our sage, 
our time and we can start putting stuff on the griddle. Let's do it. Oh yeah, I think that works pretty good. A little corn cooker on the side. Before it gets hot, do not do this when it's hot. Pour water on it. Before it gets hot, I'm gonna put some water on and that'll give me an idea of it's just starting to get warm, how level it is. And if I've got this going, oops, ooh, you're not supposed to put water on it at all, like down there. I'm using the water. That shows me I'm a little bit low on this side, but not so much I'm concerned. I can push my butter and herbs and spices up on the other side. I think that's pretty good. If I wrestle with it more. And that, and I wanted to give it one little rinse. Just gonna clean it with a paper towel. Hey, let's go hide. Because he's always spotted. Oh! <laughs> All right. What did the puppy say when he said on the same thing? I personally think this is really like you because you're always making things. So what did the puppy say when he sat on the sandpaper? Uh, rough, rough. Dang it, you guessed it right. <laughs> I'm the master of the dad joke. Of course I get it right. Olive oil. Shallots, there's onions. Tater tots. Cauliflower. That was my cheek meat. It jumped off the griddle. Mmm. All right, here. Grab it. What'd you think? Mm, really good. Mm. What? Oh, I would say first lesson for this, don't overload it until you're a master. Right now, I feel like if I had done just the taters and the cauliflower or just the fish, one versus the other, I might have done. Might have had that perfect, but we're talking flavor. The flavor is gonna be there. This is gonna be epic. I think we gotta get those taters off. Mm. Check on them. Oh yeah. That's good. Mm-hmm. Cod, any cod? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's done. At least that one, the one with the skin on it, is still gonna take a second longer. Put the corn up there, hoping that that reduces the heat a little bit on the top. It really gets hot. I really had this thing ripping. There's a balance here. I think uh, you want to let your fire go down low, have a certain amount of lower heat. I had a lot of hot. Why are frogs so happy? I don't know. They eat whatever bugs them. Oh, too bad I wasn't a frog. <laughs> My mom used to always say there are, you know, there are some wild animals that eat their young. Yeah, there are. What if, kind of mother would eat a perfectly good child? If, um, children and, um, Ooh. Got the, a nice toasted sage one off, and I better take the corn off too. Well, maybe one more turn. Corn, 
Woo! Hot corn. Alright, and let's get this off of here. There we go. That works really good. Wait, we don't have any utensils? No. It's gonna be a real rough tartar sauce. I want it to be done in time for the food to be warm still. My special ingredient, a little kimchi powder. There we go. And dinner is ready for the family. I'm gonna take a bite and we're gonna say goodbye so I can enjoy some quiet family time. Taters. Nailed it. You want to come take a bite with me too, Sparrow, before for the camera? Tell everybody what you thought. Okay. There's lemon. Mm -hmm. Correct. For Sarah. Yes. And me. And, and Abby. And me. And you. All right, Sparrow. Lemon. So we have that's tartar sauce, lemon, taters. Let's try the taters. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, let's say grace. All right, ready? Lord, thank you for this food. Bless this food to our body in Jesus' name. Amen. You goober. Delicious. Delicious? Mm -hmm. All right, nailed the taters. I like those. Mm. That crispy outside tastes really good. All mm. right, fish. Mm. Yes. Yes? Yes. I can taste that sage brown butter. That's so good. Yes. You want that bite? <laughs> Lose my finger. Good? <laughs> nailed it. All right, now, true test. Do I know what I'm doing? Cauliflower. Ruined. Ruined? Come on, give me a... All right, she doesn't like vegetables, so that's that's a hard win. How about corn? No, oh. I, le I love cauliflower. But I ruined it? Yeah, because it got boned on the sides and then it makes it's it... It's crispy, it tastes great. No, 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 it's boned on the sides, which makes it all gross on the sides. All right, how about... I don't like... How about the tartar sauce? Mm. I don't like tartar stuff. You don't like the tartar sauce? Stuff. Will you try it with one bite? I said tartar stuff. Um. Do you like it with the tartar sauce on there? Okay, fine. I like it like that. You do like it like that? Fine. Kids tested, parents approve. I think we nailed it. Say oh, you don't want a lot of taters, do you? But save the best piece of fish for you, hon. Thank you. Huh? Rough, huh? And no. some of the, oh, you get a, a little lemon. Tartar sauce. A little hunk of cauliflower on there. A little slice of pickle. There we go. That's the money. There you go, hon. Thank you. All right. And for me, Actually, and for John too. John gets to eat. I get Sky's plate. You get Sky's plate since she didn't show up. Oh, I yes. Me. John's got it's a couple not. taters. Catch up. What's too burned? There you go, John. Mm, thank you. There you go. Yeah. I'm really like cauliflower. Ooh, I'm gonna pull it off. I almost forgot and give you this on a hot sauce on the ketchup. Oh, that's the BS de la resistance right there. Ketchup Ew. with hot sauce Ew. right in it. Here you go, hon. That worked. Trying the one with the skin just to see if it's different. Almost forgot about this. Super good. If anything, Maybe I could taste a little fleshier smell because the other one was just so buttered and sage buttered on both sides. But it's like, it's juicier because that skin was on there, I feel like. Mmm. Mmm. You just can't go wrong. Open grill, skin on maybe, and buttering it and sage buttering it back and forth and letting it grill up with that. If you're gonna do it in a fry pan or something like that with the sage butter, I think fillet it up completely just so you get that flavor and that sizzle and that little bit of crisp on both sides and it's so good. The only other way I've cooked a fish that I liked better was the lemon cream caper sauce. 
And that was the closest Sarah ever got me to putting fresh lemon on my fish and liking it. It was cooked in, so it didn't count. I still don't like the fresh lemon on my fish. I don't know, it's disgusting. Uh, thanks for watching. If you wanna know more about the Solo Stove, check out that link in the description below for the Fowler Extra video on that. And uh, see you guys in the next one. Fowler, out.